we'll take care of them. You know, people have a lot of this confidence. You know, we got, you know, we got the best technology. We got the best fighter planes. We got, you know, we got nukes galore. You see what I'm saying? So people could yeah, like, right. oh, I could go on my everyday life because I know that what we have in our arsenal will, will protect us. Yeah. Yeah, and then we got you know creatures that that have done things that you know we haven't even done. I mean, it's obviously their technology is is going to be a whole lot more advanced than what we could ever imagine. Yeah. So yeah, I guess people would be a bit freaked out over that. I mean, they, they they've managed yeah, to you know exactly. cross tons of different galaxies, and you know we haven't even been past the moon yet. So I mean that that, that is kind of scary if you think about it. I mean, what kind of weapons do they have? I mean, sure we have things that can yeah. destroy this planet Absolutely. perfectly fine. You know, right. they've got space cops that can, you know, be intergalactic. And I, had a, I have a couple of contacts in NASA that I was back and forth with that are, you know, they're um, they, they they straight out telling me, man, you know, he says we got we got tons of footage and stuff that we can't explain what the hell flew by, what what's the, you know, tagging around the international space station once in a while. Um, objects on the moon that come and go. <laughs> they told me straight out, man. They said, you know, we, you know, we'll know immediately if there's, you know, if it's an asteroid, micro, you know, micro meteorite burst, anything like that. But he said these are yeah. these are um, these are devices that are um, are strictly navigational control. And all of a sudden they're there. They they, they come down and they take off. And he says, um, wow. "Any any of our uh, any of our um, you know call it infrastructure at the planet Earth? It's not coming from China, Japan, or the Soviet Union. So where is it coming from? It's not Canada, and we're definitely not sending anything up. So where's it coming mm-hmm. from? You know, and they're uh, oh, they, they they come across this every so often. And they're like, yeah, we don't know, but you can only speculate where it's mm-hmm. coming from." Some some intelligence out there somewhere. Well, what do you wow. think is the main purpose of like, why aliens would uh you know want to come and visit our planet? What was that? I'm sorry. What do you think the main purpose of of uh you know aliens coming to visit our planet? That that, that question is a great question because that question also goes back to a classic case to this day. To me. It's probably one of the top, maybe top five cases of classic cases. Remember, there was a case in 1961, and I actually did a lot of research and actually spoke to the living, um, well, the 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 niece. And um, this was the Betty and Bonnie Hill incident in New Hampshire. Oh, I love that. So, what's that? What was that? I love that case. I mean, I remember from a, yeah. growing up, you know, as as a little girl, and and with that was what first got me interested in that. So yeah, so that's a great case. I actually Kathy Cow. Her name is Kathy Martin. She's um, she wrote the um, her and Stan Friedman wrote a book together. They got together and became partners. And they they wrote a book called Captured. Now that's really based on the original book that was done by uh, John G. Fuller called The Interrupted Journey. Now the Interrupted Journey book was really exact interrogation and interviewing with Betty and Bonnie Hill by the author that came out with that book. Mm-hmm. Now to answer your question, Dan, why would they want to come and visit it? It's a good question. Is I just think that maybe that particular species, they're basically, or more what I call, I call them um, mono species. So basically, they all feel, think, and react the same. So in other words, if you had a population of, say, 100,000 of these things, they basically, there's no independent individualism between one to the other. So I think if yeah. one mm-hmm. thinks, the other one thinks the same. So in other words, they all kind of think, they all feel the same feeling, and they all think the same way. So there's no independence. 
I think maybe they were interested in this planet is because a well it's it's a nice to visit because it's definitely uh it's got its attractions you know if it could take its at oh, yeah. type of atmosphere it's, it's, um there's, there's that, the other thing is flying around space thing you know i i would like to go check out the grand canyon yeah yeah or okay. you know you can check out you can check out yeah, exactly or you want to check out the the beautiful caribbean waters or you know east china sea where i was down there you know it's like hawaii you know you get paradise here so but what's intriguing, what's even intriguing to you and I and everyone else, but even more intriguing to them, is how do you get two, what we call human beings, so two, two, two specimens of us, and that we are totally unique. So in other words, don't even have the same uh, structural pattern. Um, mm-hmm. In other words, right? Every single detail of you take these two human beings are totally different. So they don't think the same. They don't react. They might react similar to a certain event, you know, like maybe a laughter or maybe a crying event. But basically, there are two independent species. That's what I say. So these aliens probably say, geez, this, this planet is loaded with these, you know, with these individual specimens here, but no two of them alike. They're, they're, they're totally how many different combinations of faces, let's say they call that a face too, are totally um, totally different. So yeah. that's what maybe intrigues them to go investigate and go, what makes up these these individual specimens <laughs> that are unique from one to the other? They're, they're, they can't they can't they can't imagine how that could be done. Mm-hmm. That's a good theory. I hope for the, you know, I hope for the sake of our planet that that theory is correct. Um, yeah. I, I do, because there's the other theory that that suggests that um, maybe they're exploring our planet for the same reason why we're trying to explore other planets. Um, our resources are getting limited. I mean, it's a possibility, but you know what's interesting is the um, Betty Barney case when she came up with a map, a map system that the alien kind of put in a, what they call hologram back then, which wasn't termed yet, mm-hmm. but kind of like, um, kind of just think of a hologram that just comes down and the guy could actually kind of do like in Star Wars that and, information where she, uh, where she remembered it. Yeah. So they were in a double, double sun system of uh, Zedi Reticuli 1 and Zedi Reticuli 2. So it's almost the, except we have one here, one dwarf sun. So they have two, but similar type of planetary, you know, environment, according to what they told her. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Now, do you believe, personally, personal opinion, do you believe that uh, they have um, reproduced, whether it was, you know, genetically, um, physically with with humans and have produced uh, alien slash human? I mean, crude term, but... Some kind of sex species? Um, yeah, like, you know... Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, what's what's something like that? Yeah. yeah, like there's maybe some people, aliens running around because if you think they're, I mean, yeah. you know, from what I've read, everyone's seen all different kinds of aliens, but when we think of the classic alien, the one that you hear the most mm-hmm. about, yeah, it's a very small and, but it it does have kind of similar features, you know, the eyes, the 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 skin coloring, right. um. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I, I kind of, I believe it personally. You know, I'm not over the top about it, but I, I do believe that it's it's going on or it's gone on. or. But what what is your opinion? Because you obviously are much more in tune of, than, than I am, so. Well, I mean, there is uh, certain underground facilities that are, especially out in Utah, that um, supposedly they're, uh, they're, doing a uh, kind of um, 
a cloning type of method of mixing also uh, of Mm -hmm. getting you could call it cross alien human pollination where Mm -hmm. they could um, basically have them you know be involved with and mixed in to the general population now the reason why I'm saying Utah is a you know huge huge um, uh, military base over there that does a lot of germ mm-hmm. warfare but at the same time there's a lot of uh, underground facilities that are um, kind of holding tanks and research going on um, which is, an, is an, another cross talk about this that um, there was some of them are under some kind of alien control with our government Kind of like, huh. um, almost kind of like a mutual agreement between the two, saying, "Well, you know, we won't do anything yet. You know, we won't take over. If you agree, where you know we could ex- experiment and see how your makeup, your function is, and see if uh, we could kind of <coughs> blend in, etc." Right. <clears throat> And there's a lot of this. Right. A lot of this. A lot of this has been going on, um, especially out there. Now, um, uh, there is uh, say, a bunch of hot spots out there, but uh, that, that's where uh, Utah is, is. Is one one major one major uh, area out there uh, by Dulce, actually, where. Um, a lot of this is going to be going on to this present day, of course. And, Do you um, think that... Uh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to ask, but you weren't done with your answering, so... <laughs> uh, but you can continue with what you were saying, and then I'll ask when you're you're done. Yeah, so um, you got to keep an open mind for something like that. Uh, and I wouldn't, you know... We wouldn't we wouldn't doubt it, and um, it does make it does make absolutely sense. Um, now, as far as the resources, um, the only thing I could think of that could be really valuable could be maybe some, you know, uranium or plutonium or something they they could use. Uh, but the other abundance that make up the the living life is is out in the universe. You know, you, you do have all the some of the and most of the elements out there. So I don't know. If mm-hmm. I think it would be more specific man made that we might have some interest that we were able to do some control. You know, especially with our atomic and nuclear fusion stuff, that they might have some some need for that or some interest to that. Uh, for as far as I would say, is resources resources there. Besides besides saying what makes the human being tick and what makes one human being unique from the other. You know? Yeah. It's it's funny, I think <clears throat> I know a little far fetched, but just bear with me. I went and saw a movie the other day, um, Jupiter Sunday. And yeah, I really honestly thought, yeah, it's gonna be this kind of stupid science fiction movie. But it really right. actually had some incredibly realistic points, I thought. Like the mm-hmm. fact of how, you know, um, th- these aliens, whatever you want to call them, were, so to speak, harvesting um, humans just right. for their genetic, yep. um, to, to stay young. And I thought, my God, that makes so much sense. And, you know, they also right. brought in the thought of, oh, how the crop circles are formed and and how, you know, right. some memories get... Did you see it? I mean, it just... It, it was just amazing, and I thought, wow, I mean, these have some really valid points, and this could, you know, it makes a lot of sense. It could be explained by some of these theories in this the story. That's right. Um, but especially about the, you know, the thing that struck me again was like the um the genetic harvesting, you know, using our 
genes in our life source to uh-huh. keep 